मैंने एस वर्ष उन्नीस में ज्वाइन किया था और जैसा कि जे पी मॉर्गन साहब ने से एक बार किसी ने सवाल किया था कि स्टॉक मार्केट का क्या होने वाला है तो उन्होंने कहा कि फ्लक्चुएट करेगा तो तब तक तब से अब तक का जर्नी जो है वो काफ़ी ऊपर नीचे का रहा है आप तो जानते ही हैं कि बिजनेस में आसानी से कोई चीज़ प्राप्त नहीं होती तो ऐसा है इसकी जर्नी भी काफ़ी चेंजेस वाली जर्नी रही है और बहुत सारे स्टेजेस से हमको गुजरना पड़ा है जो सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज हमारे सामने था कि हमारे प्रमोटर के पास कोई कैपिटल नहीं था कोई भी बिजनेस को ग्रो कराने के लिए जो हम लोग सब लोग जानते हैं कि कैपिटल की सख्त जरूरत है सो वी वर अ कंपनी वर्चुअली विदाउट एनी कैपिटल ओनली कैपिटल ही हैड वॉज इज ओन अबिलिटी एंड ड्यू टू दैट अबिलिटी द कंपनी वॉज ब्रॉड टू अ पर्टिकुलर लेवल वेर इट कुड मेक अ पोजिशन फॉर इट हिमसेल्फ since we have started talking about the chairman and he is the founder and we are going to celebrate founders day so it would be apt that i should highlight some of his virtues which brought the company to this stage one of the least talked about virtues of our chairman is his courage because this industry is basically a difficult industry and you need apart from other skills physical courage and remember that we started from bihar which was probably one of the hottest places as far as physical conflict was concerned so one of the most neglected abilities of my chairman is his exceptional courage i can tell you one story that one of the hotbeds of then bihar a um, famous mining area of bihar and one of the biggest dons of that area who had political connections right up till the cabinet we actually encroached and started providing security in his area and he naturally was quite upset about it he wanted his hold to continue and we would not allow that to happen so there is a very interesting story that my chairman and that person had a meeting and i'll switch back to hindi to hamare chairman sahab ne usko kaha ki babu sahab आपका गनमैन मेरे गनमैन को मार देगा तो कोई बड़ी बात नहीं है आपके एरिया में तो ये होता ही रहता है लेकिन बाबू साहब ये सोचिए कि अगर मेरा गनमैन आपके किसी एक आदमी को मार देगा दैट विल बिकम बिग न्यूज तो द फाइनल टू कट द स्टोरी शॉर्ट इज दैट वी अग्रीड टू पे हिम फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज़ पर मंथ एंड ही अग्रीड टू लेट्स एसाइस रन फ्री सो देर हैव बिन मैनी चैलेंजेज लाइक दिस वेरी डिफिकल्ट सरकमस्टांसिस the story is also incomplete if i don't talk about the actual security guards who have brought up this company they are the people who face the physical challenges i can talk to you about one of our major deployments on the uh, ropeway of burnpur isco that was a public sector company and they had a ropeway running from chasnala to burnpur and which was used for coal transportation and there was rampant stealing of coal along the way all you had to do is take a long enough bamboo and tip the cart over they used to have carts like you have in rajgir you have these ropeway these things where people sit and go in this coal used to go and people rampantly all over the place they used to just tip the thing over the coal used to fall trucks used to come load up the coal and steal it so one of the most challenging jobs which we got is that we used to patrol 41 kilometers and not a single road was available to the guards it was virtually bushes shrubs you know those small rivulets drains and we used to patrol these 41 kilometers our people used to patrol and we brought down the losses of that company in around 87 88 it was i think from 7 crores per year to about 2 crores per year unfortunately in that particular assignment the final story is not good we lost the lives of three people so it has been a very difficult journey that's what i can share with you acha to basically physically kuch acha nahi tha because company just grow kar rahi thi capital nahi tha jo sabse acha cheez tha wo hai ki jo parivarik rishte humne banaye 
वो चेयरमैन साहब ही उसमें लीड लेते थे When I joined the company, so I was a bachelor at that time. I was I was living alone in Patna. So, हफ्ते में दो दिन वो जरूर मुझे ऑफिस से ले जाते थे कि घर में चलो खाना खाना. And I used to stand in his kitchen and enjoy his wife's company as much as his. I'm not really a drinking man, so he would have a pint of whiskey. But I used to spend more time in his kitchen than in his drawing room. And that relationship was not limited just to me. That relationship was actually even with many guards. The standard operating practice of my chairman was that, suppose he would visit some unit like Chasnala. Chasnala had 12 stations where our guards used to stay. Now we would visit each one. The chairman would visit each of those 12 stations, and since there was nothing available, the cots on which the guards used to sleep they used to be brought out, and we would sit on one cot. and the guard would come one by one and sit on the other cot and discuss anything under the moon there were no restraints on that interview it was not that i'll ask you ki kaisa chal raha hai aur kya duty kar rahe ho he was free to talk about anything and the sort of information we picked up about the people who worked for us was remarkable because many of them had stories which were more interesting than our stories we have grown up in a protected environment so our stories are not that interesting but their stories were more interesting And my chairman had a habit of remembering these things. He had a phenomenal memory, so he used to remember so many people and so many stories that it was absolutely amazing for the people on the other side. That he would meet you after maybe 15 years, and he would remember the details about your life. So this was another ph phenomenal ability. So, Sahiji, के लिए contribution तो है. सबसे बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन है कि जो लोग सबसे लोएस्ट लेवल पर हैं हमारे समाज में इनकम वाइज पढ़ाई के मामले में उनके लिए एक जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटी क्रिएट करती है और जैसे जैसे हम लोग प्रोग्रेस किए तो हम लोगों ने हमेशा कोशिश किया कि उनका लिविंग स्तर कैसे बढ़े अब सरप्राइज होंगे जान करके कि एक लेबर मिनिस्टर के साथ मीटिंग हुई थी हमारे एम की तो उसमें चर्चा हुई मिनिमम वेजेस के बारे में तो उन्होंने कहा कि देखो तुम जो बात बताओगे मैं जरूर मानूंगा क्योंकि तुम ही एक एम्प्लॉयर हो पूरे इंडिया में जो आके कहता है कि मिनिमम वेज बढ़ना चाहिए और कोई नहीं कहता तो मैं तुम्हारी हर बात मानू सो ऐसा इसका प्रयास रहा है कि एक रिस्पेक्टेबल लाइफ मिले उस तबके के लिए जिसके लिए एक्चुअली कोई कुछ कर नहीं पाता है आई नॉट सेंग कि गवर्नमेंट प्रयास नहीं करती गवर्नमेंट बहुत प्रयास करती है लेकिन टू गेट द बेनिफिट्स डाउन टू दोज पीपल इज सच अज चैलेंज सो इन दैट एरिया वी हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड समथिंग नाउ ऑफकोर्स द लेवल एट विच वी आर द साइज ऑफ द कंपनी वी आर ऑल्सो प्रोवाइडिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर बेटर एजुकेटेड पीपल एंड गिविंग दैम अ चैलेंजिंग करियर एंड आई थिंक द ग्रेटेस्ट अचीवमेंट ऑफ मिस्टर आर के सिन्हा इज दैट दो द साइज ऑफ द फैमिली हैज़ ग्रोन the family bonding has not been lost that's still remarkable that he used to spend a lot of time in bangalore because his health was not good so he used to stay in one of the yoga ashrams there in winter because in winter his coughs used to get bad you know he used to have chest congestion problems so even in bangalore it was a routine activity that every year he will organize a litti party for his jawans he would not organize any party for the officers If somebody came to meet him, fine, he would hear him. But every year, without fail, there would be one litty party where it was open house for guards. Anybody can come. No invitations would go, would go out. Word of mouth publicity only was there, and people would come. And the same bonding which I talked to you about Chasnala would take place over here also. So, in spite of today, just SIS alone, standalone is one is a strength of one lakh sixty thousand people. the whole group is now about 2 and 1/2 lakh, lakh people we still try to maintain their family culture and in many cases it is being done well i also find that he has been able to impart this ability to the people who have worked with him i am a finance guy i actually need not have ever entered into the actual business or into the life of guards but since i have worked with him I have picked up that trait. I have learned that trait, 
and that will stay with me for life. And this has happened with all the people who have worked with me. So this is a remarkable achievement that you can preserve family cultures along with your profitability management on this scale. It's very difficult to do it on this scale. Training center was an evolution. When the first training center was made in SIS, I was not in SIS. There was a location of the house of Dhanbad, in the house of Dhanbad. I was not there in SIS, so I do not know the history of that. You will have to ask my chairman. But uh, after that, there was a property which was owned by one of the coal kings of Dhanbad, Mr. B.P. Jain. He had a property in Gadawa district in Bihar. He was not able to manage that property. He didn't have the time for it. He had a lot of business pressures. And slowly, slowly, he was losing control of that property. Mr. R.K. Sina was almost like a son to him. So he said that if you can manage this property and you can use it properly, please go ahead. So that's where the training center scheme started. Very difficult conditions. I can share with you some of our early experiences. There was one bathroom. <laughs> Maybe 30 of us were attending a conference there. Sometimes we would not get water. So very interesting experiences. And why do I call them interesting? is that recently Ishant was talking about bonding. So I was telling him that until you share real hardship with people, there is no bonding. It's very difficult to develop that bond because that group will never get dissociated because they have shared hardship. So that was one of the big things. Of course, the location is fantastic. If you all ever make a trip there, it's a wonderful place. And there is a river flowing there. And I was the, as usual, the funny person that we, I'll take everybody into the river. Nobody would go until I would go. Our chairman used to say that every day we go to the river. We will go to the river, but we will go to I don't remember the date. You'll have to ask my chairman. I am very bad at dates, actually, especially historical dates. But the evolution came, the thought process behind the evolution I can share with you that up till then for officers, we were largely dependent on ex-servicemen. So, ex-servicemen had very good qualities, fantastic qualities, but they had certain limitations. Like for example, they would not move out from their home locations easily because they were retired people. So they wanted to look after their family, they wanted to look after their land. That was one thing. Second thing in the commercial world, in the management culture, they were not the best fits because they have a very blunt way of communication. They also do not understand commercials well. So we thought that we have to find a solution to these problems. And the graduate training program was a partial solution to these problems. The interesting part of graduate training program is that what it was initiated with, that culture continues. We don't look for the brightest people. Normally in every training program, like for example, the Tatas have a wonderful program for developing managers. So they take the best brains in the country. We decided to work with the worst brains in the country. We decided to work with people who were actually not very successful. But we wanted people who could actually face the physical challenges of working in a security company and who could actually gel with guards. So that's why our chairman developed this program where the focus was on getting people who were suitable for us and not necessarily academically brilliant. The other challenge was that if we took academically brilliant people, they wouldn't stay with us. So it was challenging from that side also. So the graduate training program was actually to bridge this gap. Relentless experimentation without fear of failure. That is what SIS is. That Remember that other people run one business. You have a Coca-Cola, you have one product or maybe five products which are similar. And it's a business which runs, right? We are actually 7,000 businesses combined into one. I have 7,000 customers. And right from day one, I have visualized this as a seven, collection of 7,000 businesses. I found that I could not run it profitably and equitably without looking at these 7,000 contracts as individual business. And to manage this, 
the only way is to keep changing with every contract virtually and sometimes there are changes on the customer side which forces us to change i can talk about the last big change we have made is that we developed a software for digital attendance of all security personnel all guards through their mobile phones we tried to find a vendor for this we went to every large vendor in the country nobody could even imagine our scale that you work in 20000 locations and you want 1 and 1/2 lakh people and it took us 2 years finally to develop a software for that but we did and today by god's grace it is a 95 98% success there are certain places where we are being defeated by physical challenges because the network is not there but otherwise we are successful some places the customer is not okay with this some places the union is not okay with this but as a software we are fine we were also the first to introduce mobile controlled checking systems we found that our area officers either were not visiting customers frequently enough or if they were visiting the system was not visible transparent to the customer so we developed a software called iops and we started monitoring this supervision staff the area officers who are supposed to go around checking guards raising bills interacting with customers finding their problems solving them we built a software for that and this change process actually has been there right from day one earlier we used to document it was a smaller scale so it was easier to implement as we have grown the scale has made it more difficult but this process of experimentation will continue it was very interesting meeting i met our present chairman through a common friend he is a chartered accountant in patna i had just shifted to patna from calcutta and i was looking for a job so he said that i can introduce you to mr arke sena so i went and met him and he also has a wonderful style of talking to people taking these so called interviews which i learned after maybe about 5 7 10 years that the whole interview is actually again that same garelu style that you get to know him he gets to know you there is no formal questioning and after the interview my friend asked how did it go so i said what i feel is that he talked much more in the interview than i talked <laughs> so it's a question of who actually took the interview and who gave the interview <laughs> this is what i said uh, it's a, a bit of a puzzle to me so that was the first interaction and it's never been all pleasant all through as usual there have been conflicts there have been debates there have heated arguments but they have never crossed the boundaries of family life You see, what happens is basically the future of SIS is linked to the future of security in this country. Now, you cannot look at SIS in isolation. You have to look at where security will go in this country. And whether you like it or you don't like it, there will be mechanization. So the future of security is men plus machines. now maybe it won't reach that stage where elon musk is saying that a chip will be embedded in your brain he is going to do that actually with somebody but there will be a high degree of mechanization but we do not visualize a reduction in the number of head count we don't visualize that we feel that all these things will be an upgrade on security that the quality of security will go up and that will be the differentiator so we will follow that path I can quote one person. He is heading the security for Hindustan Zinc. He has been associated with us because he was heading security of Tata Steel earlier, and before that he was heading security of Wipro. So he said that in his entire career, no matter how much mechanization happens, the physical headcount has never gone down, and he has seen more organizations than I have seen. So I also feel the same way that it's going to be a headcount business. but the value addition for the customer will go up because of mechanization and the life of the people delivering security will probably go up the quality of life will go up because they'll be paid better because they will become technical people so that's what how how i visualize it
primitive years we started with one computer which was sold to us by our former CEO's brother. Mr. Uday Singh, have you all spoken to him? His brother, Mr. Vinod Singh, his own brother, his younger brother, he was heading HCL in Bihar. And HCL was the only hardware seller virtually in the country at that time. So he sold us our first computer. He actually took some classes of mine also. And I used to fall asleep in all his classes. He used to invite me for classes at 7 in the morning. I worked till 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the night. <laughs> at 7 o'clock class, I used to fall asleep. But started from there, we started with payroll, which was our main function, because it also had a lot of compliance issues, PAF, ESI, bonus. So we started with computerizing our payroll. And it was a big change. And it has, it's gone through many phases. We started on a, what you call a 286 machine which nobody will agree to even in a phone now. So, in a long journey it was, I don't remember too many things about it because the current things occupy more of my mind. For me it has been such a long progression that I can't divide it for you. I can't divide it. You will have to ask me something more specific than that. It's very difficult for me because I don't remember. Honestly, I'll mix up one decade with another decade. <laughs> I won't be able to answer that. It's very difficult to answer. I can tell you how SIS has progressed. When I joined, SIS was working mainly in Bihar, which was Bihar plus Jharkhand. We had a fair amount of work in UP. We had a little bit of work in West Bengal. That was the size of the company. When we moved out, we grew our business in Calcutta. Mr. SS Ojha will tell you more about that. He was my first branch head in Calcutta from the GTO batch. Then we moved into Odisha very aggressively. The big change came when we got the ITDC contract. ITDC had hotels all over the country. I don't remember how many, I think around 20 hotels. So it gave us a quantum leap because we were able to position our people virtually right across the country. And it was also a huge challenge. As I told you, SIS has gone through very difficult phases. So imagine for a company which has, in which nobody has ever gone to Kerala, trying to run a hotel unit, a five-star hotel unit in Kerala. And now that officer is not with us, Mr. Harendran would have told you more about his experiences. He's one of our GTOs who actually went and set up SIS in Kerala. And ITDC gave us a big jump. It actually gave us a platform to come to Delhi. So it was a really a big story. The other big jump possibly came when we got the contract of Archaeological Survey of India. That also had similar exposure and of a higher level. We were, we were exposed to the public. These five-star hotels, we were exposed to a narrow band of people. But the ASI sites actually gave us exposure to the common man. And managing those sites had a completely different set of problems. So that was another big fillip. Getting into Tata Steel was a big achievement. That was very early, in fact. That was before ITDC came. Tata, Tata Steel, there is a very interesting story how we got into Tata Steel. They won't let us entered the gate also. They didn't know us at all. One of the directors on our board, he was an ex-IPS, Mr. Bian Prasad, whose fame was greatly linked to his ability to play football. And Mr. Rusi Modi, who was the main director of Tata Steel, he was a great football enthusiast. You all probably all know that, that Tata Steel used to have a football team way back. So, Mr. Bian Prasad, Every year he would send a greeting card to Mr. Rusi Modi, wishing him Happy New Year. And that used to be an SIS card. And Mr. Rusi Modi, on that card actually, wrote down, call this agency. And that's how we got into Tata Steel. The first assignment of Tata Steel was hilarious. We were supposed to make it cattle free. And do you know that the cows of Tata Steel, who used to roam around in the city, if they would see a SIS uniform, they would gallop like horses. It was a real tamasha. And you cannot imagine how difficult it is to capture a cow and put it in the cattle pounds. Okay, they were called cattle pounds. We got the cattle pound contract along with this contract of making them for cattle free. I've actually seen that happen, how cows were caught. It was very interesting. So you cannot distinguish my life from a size. So that has been my karma, so there is no gap between the two.